Welcome back. The House holding uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress over his refusal to hand over the Biden her audio. I spoke with the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, just moments ago and why he wants that audio. Watch. We know that this White House heavily edits things that President Biden says, and, and they have a history of that. And so we have a responsibility of oversight to ensure that what Robert Hur did and what the decision that he made not to prosecute, which what's obviously clear violations of the law, was justified and that the transcript that they gave us matches the audio. That's a very simple issue, and we are certainly entitled to the information that's being sought. Joining me now is Michigan Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, a member of the House Energy and Commerce and Natural Resources Committees, as well as the Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic. Congresswoman, great to see you again. Thanks so much for joining me. Your reaction to what you just heard and to this vote. Look, I think that yesterday's vote is a continued politicization of going after various secretaries. Uh, I, I actually have a great deal of respect for our attorney general. I do not think he was playing games. I think there was an investigation. He did not find cause. Republicans didn't like the outcome. And I, I would really ask us, Maria, on all sides, we had to stop. We had to take a deep breath and stop politicizing people that are in public service. This is a, a gotcha moment, really. It's, yeah. It. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, we need to be working together on a lot of bipartisan issues that need us working together to solve a lot of problems. And I think a lot of people feel that way. I agree with you on, on, on some level, for sure. But have you told the FBI that? I mean, do you think that there's been a political attack on President Trump since he first entered Washington in 2015? I think that— What's the answer? You know— I, I have to say this to you. What's the answer? I has very President Trump been attacked politically because he's President Trump? Because he's Trump, has he been attacked politically? Well, and and the, it's unfair. I think we're. I think there are a lot of political attacks on a lot of people. No, in a no lot I'm of asking different about ways. Donald President Trump. Trump. What about Trump? Well, President Trump does some things that I have had issues with. You know it. The two of us have had interesting uh, spars, but like we what? do it directly with each other. As what specifically? You know. Uh, I, look, I think he does some things. I think the way that he goes after people, I think the way that uh, he sometimes twists the facts. Right, but, I wish— But I'm asking about it, that on him. He was the, just the, the, the convicted of 34 counts in a court of 34 counts of right. a felony in a due process by a jury of his right. peers. What was the crime? That's, what was the crime, Congresswoman? What was the crime? Yeah. The crime was that he lied to people. Mm -hmm. He manipulated payments that were being made. He violated the law in terms of why was he making these payments. I, do, you the, see any similarity, do you peers. see any similarity to the 51 um, intelligence officials who lied about the Hunter Biden laptop right before the 2020 election, calling it Russian Look, disinformation? Honor, Hunter Biden, by the way, we have a problem on all sides with Russian disinformation. So I'm never going to downplay. I think right. we but, but have But specifically, real the Hunter Biden laptop was real. I, they signed uh, a letter the, saying that it was Russian was disinformation. Convicted. Is that a similar situation to what President Trump was just convicted of? Hunter Biden was in a court and convicted. No, that was gun charge. That was a very separate everybody. situation, different situation. I'm talking about the Hunter Biden laptop. Right before the I, 2020 election, 51 intelligence officials signed a letter saying it was Russian disinformation. They hid the truth before the election. Is that similar to what Trump was just charged I, with? You know, there's an investigation going into to that Is there? laptop. I don't have the facts. I think you're going to hear a lot more about this uh, laptop in the coming months. I'm not privy, Maria, and about what was on there, what wasn't. Right. What no, happened. I'm just asking and if it's I a similar speculate. situation. Is, is it a similar situation that people hid truth before the election in 2020 about Hunter Biden, and now Trump was just charged with, I guess, hiding truth ahead of an election about a $130,000 payment he made to a porn star? Is it I the think same? That I, first of all, I don't have all the facts, so I'm careful. I'm sorry? I think we saw—I don't have all the facts. I think a lot of people were looking for facts, didn't know what the Biden computer was. I still don't know. I think this Trump trial know happened what? after the—I uh, don't know all the facts related to this. I read lots of stuff. Well, the, I and, know that the DOJ used the, the laptop as evidence in the gun trial against Hunter Biden. So they obviously uh, looked at the laptop. They uh, said that it is real. And we knew that it was real at the time, but 51 intelligence officials said it wasn't. They lied. Well, I don't have the letter in front of me. Look, nobody's above the law. I want to make that really clear. 
Nobody. The okay. rule of law needs to work in this country. We've seen it twice now in the last month. People have been convicted. Mm -hmm. And I want to know that the rule of law works. We all Nobody. Do. And I don't care if they're Republican or Democrat or who they are, wherever. The rule of law is a very important I totally agree with fact you. in our country. I totally agree. Do you think President Trump has been treated fairly in these last six years? Uh, yeah, I, I do. I you think do. that media on both sides can go after people, but I think Donald Trump's brought on a lot of his own problems, quite frankly. Okay. Yes. Well, the former president has been hitting the campaign trail this week, and he's headed to Michigan, your state. I want to Come get on. your take on that. Fox News polls show that Trump is leading Biden by three points in your state. Four years ago, Biden was leading by eight points. Congressman, what do you think is going on here in your home state uh, that Trump is actually leading Biden in these polls? So I think it's early. I think Michigan's a total purple state. You know I've said that. Maria, you were one of the only people that believed me when I said Donald Trump could win Michigan in 215. That's right. You said that. I and remember. I was right. Yeah, and right. then it was a competitive race. We are a very purple state. Mm -hmm. I think Donald Trump uh, understands the insecurities of a lot of people and is very good at talking to them about it. It is a, there are a lot of issues in Michigan. It's not just one issue. I think this race in Michigan could go either way. Democrats have to do a far better job in delivering the message, talking about the issues. Donald Trump knows how to he does talk to people's insecurities. He doesn't necessarily deliver on what those insecurities are or the promises that he makes. Well, he, we delivered, he delivered certainly in the border, right? I mean, that was his main issue when he was president. And uh, we were at, what, I guess a 40-year low uh, or something, a 40-year low, I believe it was, in terms of uh, border apprehensions. And now we're above a 20-year high. So when you take a look at the uh, border issues and the fact that we've let in uh, people who are on the terrorist watch list, do you feel that the Democrats and the Republicans see the national security threat that is a wide open border the same? I want to say this to you. I think there are a lot more issues in Michigan than this. The fact of the matter is, I, I, Donald Trump stopped. Republicans and Democrats in the Senate worked for months to reach an agreement that didn't make anybody perfectly happy, but would have done something. And Donald Trump said, don't do it. We don't want to win. The border has been a problem through Republican presidents and Democratic presidents. Yeah, but it's gotten much it's worse tough. under Biden. You know that. It's gotten much worse it's, under Joe Biden. I can you go know back. That. I'm going to tell the 9-11 happened under a Republican president. Yeah, but that wasn't and about the I open border. That, that wasn't about the open well, border. Well, they came in under it, and we, they came into this country. We didn't catch those terrorists. So how we, come we, we allow terrorists so trying to come in? Every, we all witnessed 9-11. I was there. You, we all, we all felt horrific. it. We all had friends that we lost, and we know that it only took 19 people to take down the Trade Center. Why are we okay with having 350 people apprehended on the uh, on the terrorist watch list. Why are we okay with 50,000 Chinese nationals coming in through the open border in the last year? Why Look, aren't we doing more about that right now, Congressman? We need to be doing more about it, and we need to be putting more money, which has been cut into border agents. We need to be putting more money into asylum. Maria, this isn't simple, because we also have farmers. We have small businesses that need workers, that they're not coming in. It's impacting the economy. We've so got, you say we it should is be so complicated. Well, wait a second. No, You're talking we about make illegal sure immigration terrorists. versus illegal, right? I'm talking Correct. about illegal. I know, I know we need workers. It's fine. But I'm talking about we have a structure in place to do that legally, right? We give out what? One million but visas we don't a have year? People, we don't have people to even process that. We need to so be putting more money So are you justifying an open border in. right now? You're justifying an open I'm border right now? I'm not justifying an open border. I want to go with the compromise that was reached by the right. Republicans left by Republicans in negotiations. And why do we? Why did we not move forward with it in the Senate? Yeah. We because we didn't get it was, one it, to give them a win? Because it was allowing 5,000 illegals to come in a day before doing anything about yeah, it. They, and, it. And even the president's executive order right now has all these carve-outs. I mean, Congressman, come on. One of the carve-outs is unaccompanied children. Really? Unaccompanied children? The drug, drug cartels have been exploiting unaccompanied children for years. And now that's a carve-out in, in the president's uh, open border uh, executive order? Maria, this is a very complicated subject that no one's been able to deal with for decades. Instead well, President of Trump politicizing dealt with it. President Trump dealt with it. it was, we were at a 40 year low in terms I would of apprehension. I respectfully disagree with you on the, that. The House and passed HR 2. Was, Did you vote against HR 2? I don't remember. You don't remember honestly. if you voted against HR 2? I can't. I, 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 it was under Donald Trump, and I can't remember what I voted on back then, so I should have That's an important. That was an important bill, HR 2. You don't remember how you voted? 
I, Maria, it's early morning, and it was. Well, it's set to eight in the morning, Congressman. So good. I know, and I get up at I'm in the office at five thirty. I have to go back. I don't give false facts. Uh, Congressman, so, uh, but I want to I want to protect the border. Yes. It is a real issue. We need to be putting the dollars in, and we need to be working together on it instead of politicizing it. Yeah. That's what we always do. We do it as a gotcha against each other. Why isn't this an issue we What's can work gotcha? together on? What's the gotcha? I'm talking about 350 people uh, apprehended from the terrorist watch list. I'm talking about 50,000 Chinese nationals having come in um, in, in the last year. We don't I'm, want I'm talking them to about come fentanyl in. Flowing. But What's we don't the gotcha? have people. What is the gotcha? Well, the fentanyl, by the way, is an I issue that's killing everybody. Yeah, exactly. But because Republicans will not put the money into what we need to protect the border. Why can't we have negotiations as Republicans and Democrats like they did in the Senate and yeah. then move forward and try to move it? Why does Donald Trump say, I don't want that bill, don't do it? That's not okay either. Well, that's not solving the problem. Well, that's, we need a solution. I, you and I agree on that. Congressman, let me real quick on the Andrew Cuomo testimony yesterday. You're on the subcommittee on the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. Your takeaway from the Cuomo uh, testimony yesterday. We're continuing to go after the facts. I, I, this select committee for me is a very important committee. There were clearly things that need to be investigated. We need to be transparent on everything. What I don't want this committee to do, it gets there sometimes, is to be so political and politicized that we're undercutting people's confidence in public health. People aren't getting the vaccinations they need, like measles. We're seeing measles come back again. Well, we need to make sure we're protecting people in nursing homes, learning and not letting what happened then happen again in the future, because it's not if there'll be another, it's when. Yeah, it's very scary to think that way. That's true. And that's why we're also afraid of a potential 9-11 attack, uh, which is what some of your colleagues are talking about right now. Congresswoman, it's always great to see you. We so appreciate you Good taking on the you. tough issues always. Debbie Dingell.